All right, guys, we're we'll watching SCP-870, the Maybe Bear Monsters. Uh, yeah, I'm, this is like a new SCP for me, so I'm just going to make a little video on it because I've never seen it before. But, um, yeah, if you want to watch me to react to, uh, react to anything else like this, just comment down below. And without further ado, let's jump into this. Before we start today's video, we need to ask you a question. Are you alone in the room? Seriously. Are you alone? You may think the room around you is empty, but how can you really know that, right? Think of the technology out there being developed by groups like DARPA, the CIA, or even the SCP Foundation. Secret agents in cloaking suits could be standing around you right now, watching your every move without you even knowing. You could tell someone about this, but if you did, they'd think you're crazy. And nobody believes crazy people, do they? Sometimes people's whole worlds just collapse. One day they're living happy, successful lives with families and friends who love and care about them. Then the next day, they're truly convinced that the US government is tapping not only their phone calls and their emails, but their thoughts. Perhaps even putting dangerous brainwaves directly into their mind. Or they start to believe that those loving family members and friends seek to do them harm. Maybe they start to believe their food is poisoned and stop eating causing them to waste away from malnutrition. Most terrifying of all, maybe they start to see things that nobody else could see. Monsters that defy rationality and shake the very soul. Terrible, terrible things. These are all sadly relatively common symptoms of someone suffering from a severe case of schizophrenia, a mental illness with a wide range of detrimental effects to sufferers, first and foremost giving them an incredibly complicated relationship with reality. There's sadly a lot of misconceptions in the media about people who suffer from illnesses like schizophrenia, painting them as unstable individuals who present a danger to the people around them. In reality, people... Wait, hey, doesn't, um... Jim Carrey, doesn't he have schizophrenia? I oh, know, I heard that from something, but I don't know if it's true. People with a condition like these are three times more likely to be a victim of a violent crime, and they're also more likely to be a victim of something else, too. Like we said earlier, sometimes people's worlds just collapse, and in severe cases, they might simply drop off the map. And nine times out of ten, the reason for that is SCP-870, the maybe their monsters. Take the experience of Katrina Wayne. She was an office temp in Tallahassee, Florida, with an undiagnosed case of mild schizophrenia. For the most part, she was able to operate just fine at her job getting her work done at a satisfactory level while also maintaining a decent social life after hours. It came as a shock to everyone when she began screeching horrifically in the middle of the office. She backed herself up against the wall, picking up nearby objects and throwing them into the aisles at some invisible foe. And this isn't a metaphor. There really was an invisible foe moving towards her, and only she could truly see it. Seeing the huge, scaly body of a mature alligator from the Florida Everglades moving towards you would be scary enough on its own, but this wasn't any ordinary alligator. Its long reptilian head had three eyes instead of two, and it moved towards her on eight huge, articulated spider legs. It was like something straight out of a nightmare. Katrina was put on leave due to a stress-induced mental breakdown and prescribed a course of antipsychotic medication by a psychiatrist. She disappeared from her home without a trace a mere two weeks later. What? Or take the story of Daryl Simon. He was a mechanic working in Michigan with a family history of schizophrenia, though he'd never been officially diagnosed himself. He was working on the engine of a vintage Corvette when something strange happened. His garage began to fill up with smoke. He considered that at first perhaps it was some kind of engine malfunction causing smoke to belch out of the old Corvette's tailpipe. But then he saw something standing in the smoke. A human figure. Daryl suddenly felt a profound sense of dread seeping into his mind. He grabbed a monkey wrench and began to slowly approach the intruder standing in the smoke. It was only when he was already too close that he realized the figure wasn't just standing in the smoke. It was made of smoke. The second he noticed this, the figure's eyes opened glowing red. Its smoky face opened into a wide, toothy mouth and let out an ear-splitting shriek. Daryl suddenly found himself running as the creature gave chase. He threw his wrench as it ran. It breezed through the creature's semi-intangible form. Daryl was found later that day huddled in the corner of his garage, muttering incoherently. After seeing a mental health professional and sharing his story, he was given a schizophrenia diagnosis. 
He was given a mix of talk therapy and medication, and seemed to be improving over time. He would occasionally report hallucinations of the man made of smoke, watching from the corner of his eye, but it was dismissed as nothing more than that, a hallucination. A month later, he was gone, never to be seen again. But he wasn't the only one to fall victim to the anomaly. Shirley Nicholson, a retiree whose schizophrenic symptoms developed later in life, was having a quiet evening in her home when she first encountered an instance of SCP-870. She was watching a game show on television when she heard a strange noise coming from her kitchen, a rustling, like someone was messing with the food inside her fridge. I don't know what to think about this one. This one is really confusing. Like people just go crazy and they end up disappearing after a while. Fridge. Of course, she always had a tendency to hear things, which was why she wasn't that nervous when she got up and walked to the kitchen. That sense of confidence didn't last long. When she entered the kitchen, she saw the fridge door open with the back half of what looked like a giant ant emerging from it. Her breath caught in her throat. That giant ant, which seemed to be eating the food inside her fridge, suddenly froze, seeming to realize that Shirley had entered the room. When it backed out of the fridge, Shirley couldn't help but scream. Instead of antennas and mandibles, the giant ant had a grinning human face. As Shirley screamed, the giant ant's human face began to cackle with sadistic glee. Its jaw began to stretch open, impossibly wide, exposing the never-ending darkness within. Shirley turned and ran as the creature skittered towards her at a frightening speed. Adrenaline kicked in and Shirley ran for her life as the monster pursued her through the house. It was only when she ran out into the street and was seen by others in this bizarre outburst that the horrifying ant monster seemed to disappear. And several weeks after her schizophrenia diagnosis, Shirley Nicholson sadly disappeared too. Before she vanished, she made a panicked 911 call where she screamed down the line that the monster had come back. No explanation has yet to be found, but there are more cases to be investigated still. Don Jones, who had a documented history with schizophrenia, had his SCP-870 experience while waiting for the bus out of town late one October evening. He was checking his phone at the bus stop when he saw a figure shuffling towards him in the distance. He tried to ignore it at first. Years of therapy had taught him to try his best to ignore these strange little anomalies. He had been medicated for years, and while occasionally he had minor episodes, kind of he'd lived with the condition for long enough now that he learned how to cope. That was when the strange shuffling figure got closer. Don looked up just for a moment to see the thing coming towards him out of the dark. It was about the size of a child, though a little shorter because of how far the creature was hunched over. Literally, hunched. The entity had a rather prominent hunchback. But this wasn't nearly as noticeable as the thing's face. It had the head of a particularly mangy-looking parrot, its curved beak caked in what looked like old blood. This was stranger than some of the hallucinations he'd suffered in the past. It looked more tangible, more real, even after years of medication and therapy. He felt nervous as the thing approached him. On some subconscious level, he knew the thing intended to harm him in one way or another. When it opened its mouth and sunk the bladed tip of its beak into Don's hand, he knew that he wasn't dealing with any mundane fantasy here. He screamed and ran off into the night, the monster giving chase. He later reported the incident to the police, but his fears were written off when his medical history came to light. Everyone just assumed the man was experiencing another episode and that the wound in his hand was self-inflicted. Of course, as you've probably gathered by this point, poor Don Jones would disappear without a trace not long after. Still, the testimonies get freakier. A warehouse security guard, Alex Landry, had his terrifying encounter while on the job. He was on his nightly patrol when he heard a strangely soft skittering noise coming from inside the warehouse. He deployed his flashlight and ran inside after radioing for assistance. He was expecting maybe an escaped animal or a young hoodlum messing around inside. What he didn't expect was a face-to-face -face encounter with pure terror. As his flashlight beam traced its way up to the top of the warehouse, he saw a monster crawling across the ceiling. It was a giant 15-foot-long centipede, but instead of having normal centipede legs, it had scores of twitching, grasping human arms. He was found in a comatose state by his partner and spent the brief rest of his life in a psychiatric facility before, you guessed it, disappearing without a trace. And most exhilaratingly, we come to the tale of Mr. Holgate, which both ends a little more hopeful for him but paints a grim picture of what happened to everyone else. Mr. Holgate had encountered a spider-like creature with a freakish number of legs, 
which he soon realized only he could see. During his periods of observation, he'd seen the creature both devour a ruler, as in the measurement device, not a king, as well as swallow a human whole after an extended period of stalking the victim, leaving nothing behind. Just like the SCP-870 instances had done to all of their other victims. When the monster eventually came for Holgate, he was ready. It ran screeching towards him Damn, on its too many strap. legs, and Holgate whipped out a gun and shot it. The Foundation had prioritized the capture or destruction of SCP-870. It's believed to be not a single instance, but an entire species, living out there, preying on humans, and hiding in the space between our perceptions. Even two schizophrenic people looking at the same instance will report seeing completely different entities. The monsters are all the more dangerous due to the fact that sufferers of severe schizophrenia often report hallucinations of strange monsters or entities, so their pleas for help are often ignored by neurotypical authorities. Neurotypical meaning those who don't experience any form of mental illness, personality disorder, or developmental condition. People who can never see SCP-870 coming until they're already being swallowed whole. The lead researcher on the SCP-870 case follows up the file on the monsters with an ominous note that leaves little comfort for even those of us who don't suffer from schizophrenia. The note reads, I personally don't believe that the schizophrenics are really seeing SCP-870 fully. They can just see it more than us. We don't see it because our brains aren't made to see it. The schizophrenics, their brains are wired up just that tiny bit differently and they can see it just a tiny bit more. These things have the perfect camouflage, and we simply are unable to see through it. To return to what we said at the very beginning of this video, look around the room and answer our question. Are you alone? Now, at least you know the answer to that question may not be as simple as it seems. Now go check out Evil Monster created by SCP Foundation, SCP-2419, makes you think are crazy people really crazy <laughs> but um yes yeah, that's the end of the video if you liked it leave a like comment and subscribe and goodbye